In our next example, we're going to try and figure out what the next resonant frequency is going to be in a closed end pipe. Closed pipe meaning closed on one side, open on the other side. Just like in the other two examples, on the first example we had our first resonance frequency in such a way that we have a displacement node on this side and a displacement antinode here. We have the same thing over here, displacement node, displacement antinode, but we have one additional displacement node somewhere inside the tube. So for the third example, we're going to have two additional displacement nodes inside the tube. So we're going to have perhaps one over here, one over there, and then if we connect those with a wave, that would make sense, we will have a situation that looks like that. We have a displacement node at the end, which is a requirement for a standing wave. We have a displacement antinode on the, very, on the open side of the tube, which is a a requirement for a standing wave in a closed tube. And then we have two more displacement nodes. These are places where the displacement of the air molecules will remain at zero because the incoming wave is in phase with the outcoming wave due to the 180 degree phase shift at the very end. This now means that the total length of the tube is equal to a hole and a quarter or five quarters of a wavelength. And now what frequency is required what frequency sign is required to have a situation like this, realizing that the length of the tube is still at 0.425 meters. So what kind of frequency sound will set up a standing wave that looks like that inside the tube? So notice it just requires a different frequency of sound to have the different kinds of standing waves inside a tube of a particular size. Well, first of all, we're going to calculate lambda in terms of L. So we can say that lambda is therefore equal to 4 fifths L. And we know that L is equal to 0.425 meters. So 4 fifths times 0.425 meters. And that gives us the wavelength of that particular sound. So 0.425 times 4 divided by 5 equals 0.34 meters. So the wavelength for this has to be 0.34 meters. Now we go to the relationship between velocity, frequency, and wavelength. So we have velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength, which means frequency is equal to velocity divided by the wavelength. Velocity is equal to 340 meters per second, and the wavelength is, wow, that's kind of interesting, 0.34 meters. So without a calculator, we can say that the frequency required for the third resonance frequency, because this would be the third resonance, is equal to this divided by that, which is 1,000 hertz. Now notice 1,000 hertz is five times as much as the base frequency of, of the first resonance, the 200 hertz. So we could say that the frequency for the third resonance is five times uh, the frequency of the base or first resonance. Since it's five times the frequency, we call that the fifth overtone. So here we call this the third overtone because it was three times the base frequency. Here we call that the fifth overtone situation and with a wavelength of 0.34 meters at a frequency of 1,000 hertz. So now you can see we have three examples of standing waves of an air column inside a tube. Here we have it such that the wavelength is one quarter, or one quarter of the wavelength is equal to the length of the tube. Here, three quarters of the wavelength is equal to the length of the tube. And here, five quarters wavelength is equal to the length of the tube. Each time it requires a greater frequency, 200 hertz here, which is of course the base frequency or the first resonance, three times the base resonance of 600 hertz, which is the third overtone, three times the frequency, and here it's five times the base frequency, or 1,000 hertz, which is the fifth overtone, five times the base frequency. And those are what we call the resonance frequencies of standing waves in the tube, and that's how we calculate them.